Changing Views of Earth On the ground, looking around. No matter where on earth you go, people like to talk about the weather. This weekend's forecast may provide the main criteria for planning outdoor activities. Where does all that information about the weather come from? The ability to predict storms and droughts required centuries of scientific innovation. We had to look up at the skies to learn more about life here on Earth. Long ago, humans based their knowledge on what they experienced with their eyes and ears. If people could heighten their senses, they might not feel so mystified by the events confronting them daily. For example, something as simple as the rising sun perplexed people for centuries. They believed that the earth stayed in place while the sun moved around it. This was called the geocentric model. In the early 1600s, an Italian named Galileo pointed a new tool called the telescope toward the night sky. As a result of his heightened vision, he could see stars, planets, and other celestial spheres with new clarity. Each observation and calculation led him to support a radical new model of the solar system. In the heliocentric version proposed by the scientist Copernicus, the sun did not orbit the earth. The earth orbited the sun. These diagrams show the geocentric, earth in the center, and the heliocentric, sun in the center, views of the solar system, earth, sun, sun, earth. Galileo's telescope helped prove that Copernicus's heliocentric view was correct. In, in the sky, in the sky, looking down. New technology allowed scientists to evaluate theories better than ever. Measuring devices such as the thermometer and barometer offered new insights into weather patterns. However, people were still limited to ground-based learning. What if they could travel into the sky, where the weather actually happened? In the mid-1700s, some scientists sent measurement devices higher and higher. At first, they used kites. Before long, hot air balloons offered new ways to transport the tools, and sometimes scientists themselves, into the sky. However, scientists were not satisfied studying the lower layers of Earth's atmosphere. The more they learned, the higher they wanted to go. They also wanted to obtain information more quickly and accurately. Kites and balloons were hard to control. As a result, they occasionally veered off course or got lost, taking their data with them. The development of aircraft in the early 1900s promised safer ways to observe Earth's surface and the atmosphere above it. Kites and balloons could reach altitudes of approximately three kilometers. By comparison, airplanes lifted scientists to a height of five kilometers and more. Radio technology allowed scientists to transmit data from the air to the ground, where other scientists analyzed and compared information. Breakthroughs came fast and furiously. Still, scientists dreamed of reaching ever higher. Mesosphere Stratopause Stratosphere Ozone layer Tropopause Troposphere Altitude, 60 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 40 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 10 kilometers. As humans reached higher, we learned more and more about Earth's atmosphere. Out in space, looking back home. In the late 20th century, Advances in aeronautics led to more powerful rockets that lifted satellites into orbit around Earth. From these heights, scientists could study the composition and relative thinness of our layered atmosphere. Since meteorologists could analyze multiple factors at once, the accuracy of their weather predictions improved dramatically. NASA launched dozens of satellites into orbit in the following years, 
Some stared back at earth, while others peered deep into endless space. They gathered astronomical data about the ages of planets and galaxies. Sensors and supercomputers measured things such as Earth's diameter with incredible accuracy. Because of this technology, scientists could develop more reliable models about Earth's systems. For example, they could form theories to show how climate might change over time. Space missions continue to venture farther from home. Even so, nothing compares to seeing Earth the old way, with our own eyes. Views of our planet from space inspire awe in nearly all people who have seen them, even in photographs. With all the arguments for going to the moon, said astronaut Joseph Allen, no one suggested that we should do it to look at the Earth. But that may, in fact, be the most important reason. Satellites launched into orbit only last for a limited number of years and then must be replaced.